Okay. What's up, everybody? Let me just set this thing up here. Greg and I are going to connect and we'll get started. Sturdy, what's up? Hear me okay? Stand here. so tall. <laughs> I'll lose the last leg. And bam, that might be better. That's much better. Let's order you up. There he is. What's up, boss? How are What's you? Up, bro? What's up, bro? I'm on? doing great. Awesome. Trying awesome. to set up this uh, tripod so I don't am look I, like I'm... Am I, uh... Am I sideways now? You are sideways. Yeah. Okay. All I right. guess they, they stick it on it that way. Yeah. It's all good. All good. I tried all it. Good. I tried it too, and, and Facebook said, "Nope." Okay. <laughs> no problem. No problem. No problem. All right. Let all me right. see. Who we got on here? Give me how about some give me two seconds. Here. I'll share to a couple of groups, and uh, let's just get going. Okay. Cool. Sounds Wanna good. Hold them down. Sounds good. Let me you shout out hold some them down and let them know what we're talking about. Good morning, sir. I know you're on the West Coast. Jocelyn Wallace. Good morning. Hopefully you guys can still see me. Uh, let's see here now. Jocelyn's a winner. SSPT winner. Nicholas Rolnick. Good morning. James. Jim. Season winner. What's up, Brett? What's going on? Who else we got? Um, Heather is a season four winner. She is part of my family. Heather, you good? Let's go. It's time for us to win. We're winning today, baby. Winning. We are winning. All right. Who else we got? Take it over. Rose. Brett. Brett, you feel like it's a blast from the past? Remember around this time? Wasn't it around this time last year? It was around, around this time, time of year. We I was going to say, our... last time we shared a, a stage of some sort, that was, uh, that was CSM. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Brett, I hope okay. everything's going great. We got Michelle Rose here. Mario Beltran, season four winner. Let's go. All right. So I guess we got to talk. Go ahead, Ben. You can start it, and then I'll, uh, I'll throw in my we'll Roll into it, huh? So, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, Greg and I just felt like we had to jump on. We had to jump on just because, oh, gosh, I think every day, you know, and Greg, tell me if I'm, I'm wrong, but every day I get a reach out of some sort with one of our colleagues, one of the PT fam, just completely down completely down, not sure where they're supposed to go, not sure why they even got into the profession for a certain point uh, because of one thing or another. And uh, it's just burnout everywhere. And like, it's gotten terrible. And this crookedness is bothering me, so I'm gonna fix it real quick. <laughs> it, it's gotten terrible, it's gotten so bad that uh, you know, on, on more than a handful of occasions, we're seeing colleagues burn out so bad that they are taking weeks, if not months of sabbaticals um, and developing, you know, and it's not to make any kind of uh, beration or to make light of the situation, but um, there are our, our physical therapy family guys out there that are burning out so poorly. And it might be you that we're talking about um, that it's gotten into some type of anxiety problem, uh, some type of insomnia problem, some type of, you know, behavioral and or mental concerns where it's become a disorder or a true issue uh and you know this is absolutely not to be taken lightly this is insane we're supposed to be the the facilitators of health and, and now we're falling prey to this downward spiral and it just sounds like everybody out there that is willing to speak a voice is willing to speak a voice that primarily is about losing less not winning more and it's primarily about you know how do we just kind of hold the lines and hold on and, and just survive and to me, that's just terrible because that's the opposite message of everything we're supposed to be, right? Like somebody comes into our clinic, back pain for 30 years, we're telling them you're about to win, right? Somebody comes into our rehab facility, to spinal cord injury, never going to walk in, you're about to win. Somebody comes into an acute care hospital uh, with, you know, crazy trauma, right? Broke every bone in their body. And we're telling them, look, it's going to take long. It's going to suck, but we're here and we're going to help you win. But we can't apply that to ourselves. And it drives me nuts, Greg. Alleviate me. <laughs> I think there's a couple of things. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Uh, can, can you hear me, Ben? Am I, good? I can hear you good. 
I can hear you good. You know, I, I think I think I want to start out by saying, you know, you so, some of you have heard me before, but the burnout formula is also the winning formula. So so I think that's the first thing that we need to talk about. We got to understand the formula first, and I'll tell you, I think this is this is one of the reasons why people are burning out, and. And before I tell you guys the formula, I think you all have to understand that um, our profession has not adapted. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. We haven't adapted. We're doing the same damn thing that we've been doing since 1982. No one's adapted. You guys are being trained in school to do the same things the same way that you always done it. Like, listen, I used to have patients, right? I used to have patients. Um, that were runners, right? Like cross country runners, right? And like, I'm like, well, they have shin splints. And I'd say, okay, well, tell me about what you're doing. One time, one of the runners came in with one of their coaches and I'm like, well, I'm doing this. And I'm like, it's like the most archaic training of running that they're doing. Like, it doesn't even make sense. There's no rest, there's no recovery, there, there's, there's, there's nothing, right? And I'm like, well, why are you doing that? And then I'm like, well, because my coach told me so. And then I looked at coach and I said, coach, why are you doing that? Well, because that's what my coach told me to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And then I'm, mm -hmm. sure, I'm sure if I went to that coach, it's like, well, why, why did you do that? Well, because that's what my coach told me to do. Right? So basically, at the end of the day, when you look at PT, everyone's doing the same damn thing that was really successful in 1978. But it's 2018. It's 2018, you guys. Speaking true. So, so, so the truth of the matter is, is that you guys are doing things that you think are right, but they're not right. They're not ways for you to win. And you're doing the same exact thing that someone did in 1991 that was okay, but it's 2018 and you're doing that thing and it doesn't work. It, it, it just can't work like that anymore, right? Reimbursement is, is down. Reimbursement is never going to go yep. up, y'all. Here, here let me say it on this live stream. It's never going to go up. It's, it's not going to happen. It's never going to go up. Sorry. 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 I had to break that news. It will never go up ever, ever. There will never be a company that's like, you know what? You know what? We want to have decreased profits this year. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you physical therapists more. It's not going to happen. You guys, it's over. It's done. So how are some people winning and some people not? They've adapted. They've adapted. That's really it. So let me quickly explain the burnout formula. Is that okay, uh, Ben? I'll, I'll say it and then I'll let Greg, you Greg, you go for it. You're, you're on fire. Let's hear this out. Okay, the Let's burnout the formula thought. is this. It, with, with anybody, I think there's even a couple of my patients are on right now. Patients, just listen up. Let GT just kind of, you know, train y'all a little bit. Let, here, let me level you up a little bit. Okay, number one is this. It's order amount, order value, order frequency. Okay, that's the burnout formula. That's also the winning formula. Order amount order frequency, order value. That's how it works. Let me explain each one. Order amount is the amount of people that are coming in through your doors. Order frequency is the amount of transactions you're having with those people. Order value is how much you're charging those people. You got it? Make sense, folks? Okay, so here's how this works. In 1991, right, the order value used, used to be, the, the, it's, it's the price, right? The price, because many of us in physical therapy were getting paid through insurance. So the price of insurance for reimbursement was sometimes between 150 to 250 dollars so that means in order for us to make a good living we didn't have to see as much people and we didn't have to see those people as often make sense so far everybody And 40 people got in. Like, that's why it was like, it was like you won a Grammy if you got into PT school, right? When you got to PT school, you're like, I like to thank my mom. I want to thank my daddy. I want to thank my, like, it was a big deal because he hit the jackpot. Because it's the same, it's the same formula, y'all. It's the same exact formula, but that's how it used, that's how it is. That's how it was back then. The order value is higher. Well, the order value has gone down now. So instead of getting paid for the same services you're doing, instead of getting paid $200, you're getting paid. 50, 60, 70. Hmm. If you're lucky. <laughs> if you're lucky, Ben. If, if, you're, if lucky. you're lucky. But so here's the problem. The problem is, is that because PT has not adapted, that means that we still need to, because you guys 
PT school has gotten more, right? So you don't expect to get paid less. You expect to get paid more, right? Because you want to make back your investment. So what's happening is that you have to increase the order amount, more patients coming in the door, and they're stressing you to see these, paper, these people for longer. The problem is, is that many of you don't have additional skills. So all you know how to do is treat people through formal physical therapy, which is you directly working with a person, transaction to transaction, and there's only two hands and two feet. You can only do that for so long. So what's happening is that it's forcing you all to work more. Hence, increase anxiety, increase burnout, increase. I mean, and you got to understand, like, I was telling this to one of my students the other day. It's like, I'm 40 today. If I had the same schedule that I had 10 years ago, well, it's actually harder. You want to know why? Because I'm older. <laughs> I'm older. I'm 40, okay? And when I become 50, that same schedule at 40 is going to be even harder. So you all think that, like, you're going to – you're not going to – unless you can – you have the fountain of youth or something, let me know. I'll, you know, I'll rent it from you. But, like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So that is the burnout formula that – also is the winning formula. That's the winning formula. You see, what I've realized is that most clinics struggle with getting more patients. Most clinics struggle with frequency. And most clinics struggle with value. And I understand that if I can increase people's frequency, if I can show them how to increase it without them actually having to do it touch to touch with someone, well... I can get them to win and people won't burn out as much. I know that if they have to see a good amount of patients, but they, if I can teach them how to bring in more patients and people that they want to see and that they specialize in, I know that they can increase their value. So I can increase their order value. Make sense? That's it. So it's the same formula, but you have to learn how to adapt. Now you all know this. If I had to tell you, you're going to see 14 patients today, 14 patients with people that you don't want to treat is like freaking pulling out your teeth. Oh, it's, God. it's a freaking nightmare. Don't, don't even stop. Okay. <laughs> stop. For, but, ben, <laughs> let, but, but, but let me ask you this. Ben, you do uh, uh, Muay Thai, right? So oh, yeah. you love that. Okay. If you had to see 12 people for that, would, would, would it be so bad? No, I could do that all day. I think you could do that could. all day. Exactly. So it comes back down to, let's go back to the formula, folks. Order amount, order frequency, order value. The beauty is that if I could help Ben get the type of people that he wanted to see all day, he'd be cool with it. Also, he would want to work with those people more. So he would probably create online programs to help those people because he loves being around those people. The problem is physical therapy, the training system, is not even training you to do that. So it's not even training you to win in the order amount, order frequency, order value. It's not training you to do any of those things. They're still training you like the 1964 cross-country coach that's having them run <laughs> 84 miles every single week without any time off. Everybody's just doing the same damn thing over and over and over again. There you go. Boom. And this is basic business, guys. I mean, like, I have zero business background until I – one of my mentors are like, go to business school and figure it out. And one of the first things we learned is everything Greg is talking about. And you might hear him in different, you know, you might hear him in different order, this order, that. The labels might be different, but the, the concepts and the way they flow is exactly the same. And a lot of what we're talking about, too, has been discussed in the past, continues to be discussed. We actually just talked about it at Graham Sessions. For those of you that don't know about it, it's a kind of an invite-only private practice uh, quote, secret session where people get to talk without too much uh, decorum. You can kind of spit fire at each other. So long as it's respectful, not insulting. But um, a lot of stuff that we talked about has a lot to do with everything Greg just said. You know, how do we take care of more people? You can't just do high touch care because there's only so, you know, until you grow more limbs, there's only so much you can do. Technology is definitely part of the solution. Digital service is definitely part of the solution. Online programming is definitely part of the solution. And the other issue, too, is the value statement that Greg was talking about. How do you actually increase the order value? The order value is changing because patients don't want to come in. Think about the last time you actually wanted to go see your primary care physician or wanted to go see your dentist or wanted to go see your eye doctor. If they could do anything like right here for you and get you everything you need, you would be pretty happy. And so would most 
healthcare consumers. And more importantly, going back to what Greg said, I'm so glad you said it out loud. Reimbursement's not going up. It never will. Never. It will I never mean, go up. We played this managed care battle in the history of physical therapy, ever. Because what happened, guys, if you don't know about this, if you don't know about this, um, historically, when managed care came around in the United States healthcare economics, what we as the physical therapy profession started doing, we started bidding each other down. You know, so Greg would go, and Greg would never do this, but we'll pretend alter ego Greg would do this. It said, you know, I'll, I'll see your patients. I only take 10 visits and I'll uh, just pay me a little less. And then for me, Ben would go, oh, no, 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 no. If, if Greg's bidding that, I'll bid lower and lower and lower until we devalued our own systems. And that's a historical problem we have to own. And it's a historical problem we need to stop repeating, thinking that, you know, direct access, guys, is a 55-year-old battle, right? Declining reimbursement is an age-old battle just about as long, right? The therapy cap, all this stuff is just about as long. So when you go down this route and you try to do the same things you've always done, that's the definition of insanity, right? And, you know, Greg, I'm so glad you said it. Everybody wants their ROI on their investment, right? You spend time and money and student loans getting your physical therapy degrees, now a doctor of physical therapy degree. And when you place yourself against that formula, if you're in a losing environment, you shall lose. If you place and craft for yourself a winning environment, you shall win. And sometimes that requires some pretty harsh realities and change. Do it. Who were those people that were saying that? And then the next group came over and said, you know what? They're going to see for 60. We're going to capture this insurance plan and we're going to see for $50 a visit. That's right. $50 a visit, what we're going to do. Okay, 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 okay. Do I have 40? Do I have 40? Do I have 50? Do, uh, do, 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 35, 35, 35, 35, 35. And then guess what happened? So, so can I tell you something, Alyssa? So let me tell you what happened. You want to know who those people were? Because I used to work for them. You want to know who those people were? They were non-physical therapists. You want to know why that was the case? Because we don't know shit in business. So we come out and we go work for people because we don't understand business, because they never trained us in business. So what we feel like we need to do is go work for people. And guess what? 90, 95% of our profession works for other people who are making all the decisions in physical therapy. And they pimped us out. That's what happened. So the reason why I'm pushing all y'all to learn entrepreneurship is so we can take this goddamn profession back. Let's get it. That's exactly it, man. <laughs> you need I'm to be. So we need, right I mean, God, okay, <laughs> Greg, here's the thing. Here's the, if we're not mad about this, if we're not, like, if that, if you, you just heard the last couple of minutes and guys, if you just jumped on and you're hearing this for the first time, you've never heard the history of how physical therapy got to this place, right? Where administrators that weren't physical therapists weren't in, you know, they were in positions of leadership, but we were not as clinicians that should have been in charge of our own business corporations and entities. And got pimped out, got sold out, got dropped down, right? That's where, I mean, for those of you that have heard, I, I think, Greg, I think you and I are probably the only ones really talking about the amount of top line revenue that clinicians get to take home with them. Because we're transparent about it. It's just, re I mean, it's not a secret. You have to dig a little bit, but it's no secret, guys. And, you know, it may, it may kind of piss you off a little bit, and it should, right? If you're a doctoring clinician, and you're bringing into a clinic $250,000, $300,000, $400,000 a year of top line revenue, and you get to keep $60,000 of it as a licensed professional. I mean, this is not an entry level high school position, guys. <laughs> you should be mad. All of these things should make you mad. But more importantly, it should take you to action. Right? It should absolutely take you to action. And start adopting and changing and learning some of these principles and these mentalities of owning the profession truly, of getting to know business, both digital and traditional. You have to also understand where the consumers are at because we're still treating, and, and this, is, this is not 100% on our educators because they're also bound by some of their own you know, political problems. But 
they can't teach us certain things in school. Some of them are trying to, and so they invite, you know, people like Greg and myself out to do virtual or physical lectures so that their students can get caught up. So there are some steps being taken. But I think, guys, Robert, okay, I just, you're, that just caught my eye, and I love it. That's exactly what I've been talking about for quite some time. Why don't we weave some type of business or healthcare administrative content within every single part of our didactics, right? Here's the manual therapy technique. Guess what you have to bill it under? Guess how you get reimbursed by? Guess how you can actually sell this to a patient as a plan of care as well as market it pre, during, and after that course of care. I mean, there's so many ways to go about it, both fun and creatively. It's just, it can boggle the mind that it hasn't done it, or been done before, but that's why we need to talk about it. Because for so long, we've been in this culture, in this profession where uh, it was, you know, if you've been around for a long time, experience meant right. And, and you were just not allowed to challenge that. But now that we're more transparent as a culture and as a society, and especially because of technology, now performance takes over, right? You have to represent yourself. That's actually one of my favorite things that I learned from the ground sessions as a first time attendee. So guys, I mean, Ken, thank you for being here. I mean, honestly, Ken, it was, it was your thread that sparked this. And, and Greg and I have been kind of been ships in the night ever since CSM wanting to talk about this publicly. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, Greg, I think this is a good time to kind of shift gears a little bit into how do we flip that into the winning formula in our own path as career professionals? I mean, take all three of those things and just say, how can I increase those things? Just understand that. If you're in control of your situation, then you can say, hey, how can I increase those three things? So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Okay, if you have your own practice, how can I be more valuable? I can tell you how you can be more valuable. Don't go around saying that you're a physical therapist. You went to school for 84 years to become a physical therapist. That ain't going to do it. I can tell you what's going to do it. What's going to do it is you knowing who you want to solve problems for, what group of people you want to solve problems for, find the problems that are really a big deal to them, and then you can increase their order value. Cash-based people, there you go. You can do that. Okay, let's talk about order amount. Let's just say you're a student right now. You got a bunch of loans. You're a new grad. You got a bunch of loans. Why don't you go learn how to market so you can increase the order amount for many practices? Because I can tell you right now, the majority of practices that I consult for, the issue, the reason why they brought me on and they pay me what they pay me is because they don't know how to bring patients in the door. They don't know how to do it. They've relied on some doctor forever and the doctor's going to retire the doctor got pissed off at them. The doctor's hormonal. What, whatever. <laughs> like, like whatever re reason it is. And then their whole business goes to kaput. So I had to make sure and I explained to them in a kind way. Mom, ma'am, sir, you actually never really had a business. You just had a little something, something. That wasn't really a business. You actually have to learn how to bring in patients. So if you guys can learn that, that's nothing special. That's nothing special. It's just a group of, it's a, it's a set of skills that I learned. And, um, and then I just, just help people learn how to do it, right? And then, or you can create a, a company that does it for them. If you do it for them, you can charge them more. That's order amount. Order frequency is, okay, insurance sucks. All right, we know insurance is absolute trash. That's a total joke. All right, so I wonder if there's ways, obviously people aren't getting totally better in physical therapy. I mean, it's actually gotten to the point where physical therapists have actually now, they're actually conditioning themselves that if I can get someone better they actually think they're getting people better in two visits. I mean, that's, that's, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, seriously, you do physical therapy. You ain't getting anybody better in two visits, y'all. Like, that's not happening. So don't trick yourself. You brainwash yourself to think everything's okay. And then all of a sudden, you're roadkill. Okay, you're roadkill because you're like, oh, my God, it's terrible. Okay, so why don't you do this? Why don't you figure out how you can actually create more transactions with people without actually having to see them? It's called the online game. You can do that for yourself as a side hustle. If you're working for a loser company and you want to be able to kind of slowly transi uh, transition yourself out, or you can do that for another company. It doesn't matter. Either way, these are all ways that you can win. So the fact is, is that you're either learning this or you're not learning it. You either have these skills or you don't have these skills. If you don't have them, go get them. That's it. It's very simple. But here's the deal. <laughs> do, hey, listen, I don't mind if you want to message me after, but do not come to me with, 
uh, we just got to change. Guys, listen, I'm, I'm done with that crap. I'm done with that, okay? Ben knows how to do it. I know how to do it. Reach out to Ben if you want Ben to teach you. Reach out to me if you want me to teach you. Reach out to us if you want to be directed on having someone else to teach you. I can tell you other people I can teach Absolutely. you as well. You decide whatever the heck you want to do. But don't come to me about this, we need to change, we need to change. I'm not about that life, okay? I got four kids. I got a wife, all right? I got families to feed. I, look, man, look, and there's a lot of people that rely on me. Got a lot of students as well. So I got to teach them. But if you want to do it, it's there for you. The beauty is that this is the age of the internet. Everything is out there for you. It's there for you to learn. But some people are just so hell-bent on saying that because I spent X amount of dollars on becoming a licensed clinician that I want all of my income to come from that and that only. And one the place. way that one place and this is it. And I'm not going to have it any other way. Well, have fun. We'll, we'll sweep up your roadkill later. Maybe we'll see, we'll see the roadkill at CSM. Ben and I will just spend oh my you know, an afternoon. We'll, we'll sweep you up a little bit. But, man, that's not fun, guys. <laughs> that's not fun. It's terrible. You're it's a colleague. It's, 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 it's awful. Thing. It's just an awful thing. So you just have to understand, don't feel sorry for yourself. In every single industry, we have to adapt. To be very honest with you, I feel like physical therapy in the healthcare industry, we've only had to adapt in the last 20 years, like three times. Whereas if you to ask, go ask like one of your friends that's a computer programmer or in computer science or, or in IT, go ask them how often they have to adapt. Every three hours. Every, yeah, they have to adapt <laughs> yeah. all the time if they want to keep their job. Mm -hmm. So like, seriously, stop feeling sorry for yourself. You really have it good. You really do. You have it good. And the beauty is that you can do any of those things that I just said or things that Ben said. And the beauty of it is that if for some reason you failed, guess what? You're a physical therapist. You can have a job anywhere that you basically want. Like you can have a job. Like you can't say that. I, I, I've got neighbors that have been out of work for, for four or five months because there's no work in their field. They'll go to Alaska. They'll go to California. They'll go anywhere to get work, and they can't. You can basically get a job anywhere. You're a physical therapist. Yeah. So if, you, if, if I'm t all the things I'm telling you today, all the things that Ben are telling you today, and it doesn't work out, what's the freaking big deal? You go work at some sniff any day of the week. <laughs> Home health, <laughs> I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It's not, it's not hard. It's not hard. It, like, and you and have the crazy, nothing I mean, to lose. You have that what you said, Greg, oh my gosh, like that part about you being a physical therapist, like the demand right now is higher than ever. Sure, it might not be the absolute setting that you want, but it's okay. It's still like a backup plan behind a backup plan. And, and what Greg said about adapting is so big on a business front. There's no other industry I can think of that goes, yeah, I'll have one revenue activity. That'll be good. <laughs> like you don't go up to like – you don't go to in and out right? And they just go, okay, we have this one burger. That's it. You know, or we sell one item at this particular store. That's it. That's all we do, right? It's, you always have diverse product lines and service lines. And you need that for yourself. I kind of call it like Ben Fung Inc., Greg Todd Inc., right? Our family households. You have to have that revenue stream, that family income, household income diversified just as you need your retirement portfolio diversified. Same with companies. And if you're, you know, if you're watching this uh, and you hail from more of like a, a corporate leadership background and you're looking to look up the chain, guys, I'm telling you, the, 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 the formula still applies where right? you have these large contracts with huge payers that are in the billions and billions of dollars. But I'll tell you this right now. They're not looking at Oswestry Westry scores. They're not looking at your dash scores. They're not caring about if your, your net promoter score is at 8.2 or above. What they're looking at is how are every single clinician by MPI number, because they're already tracking that through data science. How are they downstreaming costs? Are they actually preventing shoulder, back surgery, diabetes, obesity, mental health issues, right? This is already being tracked and it's not difficult because we have computers that are 10 times smarter than me right here. And if you're not setting up your systems to track that, you're already behind the game. You're so far behind the game. That is the future of 
the multi-tiered order values that are going to be impressed upon us in the healthcare industry and not unique to physical therapy per se. It's just, you got to adapt. I, I think, I think I, you know, I don't know how long ago it was. Maybe it was about six years ago. But there are some really big names in the physical therapy field. Like, I don't even think of myself as a, you know, I just do my thing and whatever. And I guess whatever. People say, I guess, whatever. You're a big name. I, I, I don't even see it. But, but <laughs> speak well, truth, but, Greg. You and I, well, whatever, we, we talk it's, as colleagues. We speak I mean, truth. <laughs> I just do real talk. So I don't know what you want to call me. But there, but there are some people in the PT field that I always looked at as like they were legends in my eyes, you know, cl like just, you know, clinicians, like, whoa, like amazing. Like they're so amazing. Like there's so many things I learned from them, whether it's from the books that I read from them, from the courses I went, you know, from them. And like, it's crazy because I hear of some of these people, like their practice went out of business. I'm, and I was like, how is that possible? I'm like, yeah, it's totally possible. It's totally possible because they're really good at one thing, but they weren't good at the other stuff. And today it's changed. Even the greatest, even the greatest of greats in the PT field, like that were the most amazing clinicians, they're still losing. They're, they're, they're going to lose. If you don't learn these other things, you're going to lose. You're going to lose, period, the end, absolutely positively, no doubt. You're going to lose. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what book book you did it didn't matter what thing you created didn't matter what special test was named after you if you don't know how to market <laughs> you're gonna lose you're gonna lose today 2018 you're gonna lose now conversely conversely you got young cats in pt school right now that are basically dominating the game because they've learned other skills even though they suck as a pt like they, like i mean just just out by default they're not good yet. I mean, you can't be good yet if you haven't been out there just like winning the game. But guess what? They're killing it. Because it's 2018, y'all. It's 2018, man. It's like, it's no different than it was the NFL, the NBA. Like, things change, man. Things change. Like, sometimes it's a running attack that wins you. Sometimes it's a passing attack that, that allows you to win the game. Sometimes it's a combination. Sometimes it's the wildcat. You know what I mean? Like, you got to change with the times. And there's just too many people that are just so stuck on not changing, and they're just going to complain. So that's, that, I'm just not about that life. I'm not about it. But if you want help, I'm about it. If you want help, Ben's about it. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. I know that for a fact. Here, you know what? I'll do this. Ben, do you mind? Here, you know, I'll ask for forgiveness later. Listen. For those of you that are listening right now, for those of you that are listening, if you have four schools right now, the first four schools that either message me or comment, four four schools, I can tell you right now, at least on my end, I'll, I'll actually speak online because I'm not a bobo. I ain't going to your school. I ain't got no time for that. I'll speak for your school online. And I'm sure Ben will do the same thing too. Mm -hmm. I'll speak for your school for free. I'll speak for free. Yep. Ben, will you do it too? Yeah, I will okay. do it too. Have done well, since for, I don't even know how long ago. I think the first one I'll I did was free. through some, some terribly I'll, bad connection. Like, I think it was University of St. Augustine. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll way back in the day. I'm not asking Ben to do it free because this is just a thing that just came to my head. Maybe it's, you know, it's kind of cold here. and Maybe I'm not, the, the, the oxygen. I'll do it right now. I'll do it for free. I'll, I'll go online and I'll do it. And you know something? That's fine. I'll do it because I really want to help you. I want to help you. Now, I don't want to talk to no professors. Professors, you listen right now. Don't, don't come talk to me. Tell me about this and this and that. <laughs> don't, you don't put no, you, there's no muzzle on this man. I'll say what I need to say, but I'm going to help those kids out. I'll help them out. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, there's doers and there's losers. That's it. We're trying to do what we need to do to help y'all go next level. And then there's the losers. They're just, Ooh. well, next year, I'm telling you, we're I'm telling you, Blue Cross is going to go up by 20%. Man, I've been hearing that same damn story for 18 years, man. That is not going to happen. It is not going to happen. All I've seen to do is go down. It ain't, it, it, um, it ain't going up. So I just learned how to win. I'm, not, I'm also, I'm just being honest with you, I'm not waiting for schools to change. I'm not doing that. I just created my own damn academy. 
I'm, I mean, I don't give a damn. Ben did the same damn thing too. And, yep. and, and, and are our people winning? Yes or no? Are they winning? They're winning, right? We're now. winning. We're winning okay. everywhere. So that's winning it. everywhere. Hundred percent of, and I know you have. We both have these stories because we're teaching people how to, not what to. Right. We're teaching people why, not do this laundry list. Right. And that's I, I, and I know that I, my favorite folks actually, you know, that I get to hear stories from, are uh, crossover people that learn from you, people that learn from me, and we swap these stories. And I just go, man. Greg and I needed to be on the same coast, but I, that's just not how the chips fell. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. But we're going to be at CSM. Wait, you're going to CSM, right? You'll be at CSM? I'm, I'll, I'm at New okay. Orleans. Let's right, get so, together. So, we'll be there. So, so, again, if y'all just, co just come and find us, there's a good chance that where Ben is, I'll be. Where I am, Ben will be. So, yep. so you come and find us, and we're not going to push you away. We'll talk to you. We'll try to help you. We'll do what we need to do. Hey, listen to this. This guy, right? This guy's a new guy in my course. Of course, hasn't even damn started yet. Starts on Monday. Dude literally just voice, a voice messaged me right before this, um, right before this live stream. And he basically said, hey, Mr. Todd, I just want to tell you that um, I was able to negotiate a $12,000 increase in my pay through the stuff I learned in your course. I'm like, God damn, course hasn't even started yet. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, it hasn't started yet. You guys, so the thing is this. I, are 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 they teaching you? The, are they teaching you how to win? Yes or no? I don't know what to tell you. If they're not teaching you, then just learn from people. Good grief! Mm -hmm. Look at this. Ben's in California. I'm here in Tampa Bay, and we're here able to. Technology allows us to do this, and technology allows us to have a classroom setting right now. If people listen to us, how beautiful is that? Use that technology to your favor too. Come on, guys. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's for your consumption. It's for your curation and consumption. And, you know, I can't tell you how important it is, you know, because I know a lot of people, Greg, they look up to you. And I know there's some people that, you know, think uh, not bad of me. <laughs> and, you know, and, and honestly, it, it isn't that, you know, I really, I really feel convicted about this. What you do is not special. How you do it, that is what makes you truly unique. Major and key. And, and I think from there, that, you know, that's why you, you've probably heard the word how a uh, 30 dozen times in this particular broadcast, right? How you win. This is how you win. This is how you win. And that's what we're all about. So, yep. I mean, I, I, I could probably go in circles all day. Greg, you want to close us out? Yeah, I mean, I, I just I – think, I think you just said it the best way. It's like, are you interested in winning or losing? And if you're interested in winning, just understand that – all you need to know is the winning game plan. You just need to know the winning formula. And I got to tell you something, y'all. The winning formula is going to change. It's going to change. It always does. It always does. It's going to change again. And I'm not going to be like, you know, I did a live stream the other day ben, where I talked about uh, Napoleon Dynamite and, and Uncle Rico. <laughs> and, and I'm not going to be like, man, I remember back in 2018 when I was killing it. You know what I mean? I was throwing that pig skin, man. I, was, I had all those SSPT winners. <laughs> you know, like, man, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be right there when we win again. I'm looking at the trends. I have a passion for serving my patients. I have a passion for finding the people that need my help in the field of physical therapy. I have a passion for finding that. So if you see my ads everywhere for renewal rehab, or you see my ads everywhere for Greg Todd Physical Therapy uh, you know, Builder, it's because I have a passion for serving a specific type of person. And I understand that I have to put it out to everyone because I don't know all those people yet. I don't know who the next Scott Field is going to be. I don't know where, where Tawny is going to be. I don't know her yet, but I need to find her. I need to find him. I need to find them. I need to figure out how to find them. So I'm going to put it out to everywhere because I love what I do. I love physical therapy. I love the things that we do. I have a passion for that. You guys understand that? So a lot of you are like, oh, you probably see my stuff. I mean, all my student stuff are like, no, this is GT stuff. It's all good. You see a bunch of stuff for UpDoc, for Ben or whatnot, or for Gene. You're like, okay, you know. But when you guys know us, you know our passion for helping. You guys, do you – listen, man, put it in the comment section right now. Do you have a passion for the field of physical therapy? Yes or no? Yes or no? If you have a passion Light for it, up. I want to see it. Do you have a passion for it? Then if you do, then you have to be – Freaking relentless, man. 
You have to be relentless about getting your message out to people. You got to be relentless about the people that you want to serve. You got to be relentless about the things that you can help people with. You got to be relentless about it. If you really have a passion, I think a lot of people, what has happened is because they've been doing the losing formula, Ben, they lost their passion. They lost their way. Let's get out. it, Ken. Let's freaking go, man. Out. They lost and their And if you way. don't do it, somebody will define it for you. That's the worst exactly. part. Somebody exactly. will define it for you. I, one of the, uh, it, it breaks my heart and it makes me mad. All right, guys. I think one of the trending topics in physical therapy on Twitter right now is some, you know, insulting commentary thread, you know, fueled behind selling CEUs. So guys, like, if you're not on top of it, if you're not spreading your truth and your word, somebody will put a label right on you. Loser. That's it. <laughs> that's all it's gonna. That's, that's what's gonna happen. That's that all it is. What's gonna happen. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Here, I'm gonna tell you something else. I'm gonna call. I'm listen. I'm gonna call out people right now. I'm gonna call out people because I don't care. If you're talking more about physical therapy to physical <laughs> therapists. <laughs> If you are talking more about physical therapy in groups than you are to the people that need you, well, you got a problem on your hands, folks. You hear me? You got a problem on your hands. If, you got, if you're talking more about physical therapy in groups like, oh, did you see that chiropractor ad? <laughs> they talk about physical therapy. If you're talking more about that, then you're part of the problem. I'm out there, man. I'm out there right now. And I'm trying to find people. I'm trying to find more people to help at my offices. I'm trying to find more people to win. I'm trying to find physical therapists that want to level up. I'm trying to find them. And when I find them, I'm taking care of them. When I find people at my office, we're taking care of them. We're serving them at the highest level that we possibly can. And then we're helping them beyond that. And that's why we're winning. That's the reason why we're winning, folks. Just to recap, it comes back to those three things I talked about. It's order amount, order frequency, and order value. Figure out how that works in your life. Figure out how you can make that work for you. Boom. Guys, if you're watching the replay, thank you for joining us. For all y'all joining us live, thank you for joining us. It's, it's been a long time coming, Greg. Thank you for connecting you, with ben. me on all, all this Pacific Coast time because I know it's a little tough uh, – you know, with us uh, late wakers. <laughs> that's, right, that's, right, that's right. That's right. But guys, right. this this is just truth. It's just Greg and I speaking truth. Like that's why I labeled it that way because, you know, like we 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 have the only thing we want to sell you right now is for you to own that truth and own that passion, and level up that game. You know, if you want to hope for your career and for your profession, that's the only way it goes. And until you realize that for yourself so much so that that fire makes you spread that passion, then nothing's going to change, right? And it goes back to the whole, like, I want, we want change. We want change. Well, change takes action. So start acting now. All right. Guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Greg, I know you and I will be talking more. Thanks, guys. Take it easy, guys. See you later.